Let's say that we've got the equation 2x minus 1 times x plus 4 is equal to 0. Pause this video and see if you can figure out the x values that would satisfy this equation, or essentially our solutions to this equation. All right, now let's work through this together. So at first, you might be tempted to multiply these things out, or there's multiple ways that you might have tried to approach it. But the key realization here is that you have two things being multiplied, and it's being equal to 0. So you have the first thing being multiplied is 2x minus 1. This expression is being multiplied by x plus 4. And to get it to be equal to 0, one or both of these expressions needs to be equal to 0. Let me really reinforce that idea. If I had two variables, let's say a and b, and I told you a times b is equal to 0, well, can you get the product of two numbers to equal zero without at least one of them being equal to zero? And the simple answer is no. If a is seven, the only way that you would get zero is if b is zero. Or if b was five, the only way to get zero is if a is zero. So you see from this example, either, let me write this down, either a or b or both, because zero times zero is zero, or both, must be zero. The only way that you get the product of two quantities and you get zero is if one or both of them is equal to zero. I really want to reinforce this idea. I'm going to put a I'm going to put a red box around it so that it really gets stuck in your brain. And I want you to think about why that is. Try to come up with two numbers, try to multiply them so that you get zero and you're going to see that one of those numbers is going to need to be is going to need to be zero. So we're going to use this idea right over here. Now this might look a little bit different, but you could view 2x minus 1 as our a, and you could view x plus 4 as our b. So either 2x minus 1 needs to be equal to zero, or x plus 4 needs to be equal to zero, or both of them needs to be equal to zero. So I could write that as 2x minus 1 needs to be equal to zero, or, or x plus four. Or x, let me do that orange. Actually, let me do the two x minus one in that yellow color. So either two x minus one is equal to zero, or x plus four is equal to zero. x plus four is equal to zero. And so let's solve each of these. If 2x minus 1 could be equal to 0, well, let's see, we could add 1 to both sides. And we get 2x is equal to 1, divide both sides by 2. And this is just straightforward solving a linear equation. If this looks unfamiliar, I encourage you to watch videos on solving linear equations on Khan Academy. But you'll get x is equal to 1 half as one solution. And this is interesting, because we're going to have two solutions here. Or over here, if we want to solve for x, we can subtract 4 from both sides. And we would get x is equal to negative 4. So it's neat. In an equation like this, you can actually have two solutions. x could be equal to 1 half, or x could be equal to negative 4. And I think it's pretty interesting to, in, to substitute either one of these in. If x is equal to 1 half, what is going to happen? Well, this is going to be. 2 times 1 half minus 1, 2 times 1 half minus 1. That's going to be our first expression. And then our second expression is going to be 1 half plus 4. And so what's this going to be equal to? Well, 2 times 1 half is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I don't care what you have over here. 0 times anything is going to be equal to 0. So when x equals 1 half, the first thing becomes 0, making everything, making the product equal 0. And likewise, if x equals negative 4, it's pretty clear that this second expression is going to be 0. And even though this first expression isn't going to be 0 in that case, anything times 0 is going to be 0. Let's do one more example here. So let me delete out everything that I just wrote here. And so let's. I'm going to involve a function. So let's say someone told you that f of x 
is equal to x minus five times five x plus two. And someone said, find the zeros of f of x. Well, the zeros are what are the x values that make f of x equal to zero? When does f of x equal zero? For what, for what x values does f of x equal zero? That's what people are really asking when they say, find the zeros of f of x. So to do that, well, when does f of x equal zero? Well, f of x is equal to zero when this expression right over here is equal to zero. And so it sets up just like the equation we just saw. x minus five times five x plus two, when does that equal zero? And like we, like we saw before, this has, well, this is just like what we saw before, and I encourage you to pause the video and try to work it out on your own. So there's two situations where this could happen where either the first, the first expression equals zero, or the second expression, or may, maybe in some cases you'll have a situation where both expressions equal zero. So we could say either x minus five is equal to zero, or five x plus two is equal to zero. I'll write an or right over here. Now if we solve for x, you add five to both sides of this equation, you get x is equal to five. Here, let's see, to solve for x, you can subtract two from both sides, you get five x, is equal to negative two. Then you can divide both sides by five to solve for x, and you get x is equal to negative two-fifths. So here are our two zeros. You input either one of these into f of x. If you input x equals five, if you take f of five, if you try to evaluate f of five, then this first expression is gonna be zero, and so a product of zero and something else, it doesn't matter that this is gonna be 27. Zero times 27 is zero. And if you take f of negative two-fifths, it doesn't matter what this first expression is. The second expression right over here is gonna be zero. Zero times anything is zero.